Hello, cellists. If there is one piece that everyone associates with a cello, it is in sense this one. Sometimes I play this in encore and I find it so funny that no matter how challenging uh, musically and technically a program is, if I play this one as an encore, people will be coming out of the concert hall, humming it, talking about it, and remembering it the most. This one is a beautiful piece and we can also use it to improve our vibrato sound, uh, slow our shifts and smooth our position changes. Let's keep in mind that although the tempo marking is adagio, the original version with two pianos has uh, Andantino Grazioso marked in the score. So keep the tempo relaxed but flowing. Let's look at the first shift, which is uh, in bar number two. Um, from the F sharp to the B. We want to hear this shift without making it sound cheap. So there is air in the shift and you will hear that I lift the pressure of my bow and you can almost hear a um, whistling. This is slow motion. So When we move from the D to the G, I use my first finger for the G. Uh, here. Here. So that the vibrato is not interrupted. Yeah, practice a continual vibrato here. Even if you choose to keep the second finger, sometimes it helps if you press down the uh, D string with your first finger so that the second finger um, can smoothly move to the D. The um, A, B and C should have a slight slowing of the vibrato so that the C is less intense than the A here. <laughs> So I will play from the beginning. If you were to sing it, it will sound something like So you see how the A has more um, heaviness to it uh, than the C. It tapers off. And so uh, also, our sound should taper off, so... As you see, the C has a little narrower vibrato, a bit more narrow than the A. This is a short vibrato that is not super intense. But it's not sluggish either. In bar 4, the original has uh, all separate bows, so... Uh, but we usually like to shift on the down bow and get to the B on the down bow, so you can choose to slur the first two eighth notes, so... Or the last two eighth notes. come to the A sharp in bar 7, let's show the difference here. Uh, so obviously the first time we have a G going to A, here we have G going to A sharp. showing this difference by intensifying my vibrato. When you get to this high D, be sure uh, that you pull back your arm. 
Um, the arm should not be parallel to the string like this. It should be pulled back so that the meatiest part of your finger is on the string and this makes for a richer sound. There's a groove in my finger that's kind of diagonal. Um, or you can shift uh, There's many ways of playing this piece. Uh, if you do shift, be sure it is a subtle shift. So lift your bow and your left hand, I would say, and, and slow your vibrato down. When you shift down in bar 10, be sure that your shift is in the tempo of the piece, so which is quite slow. No jagged motions, abrupt motions. So, this is not an easy shift. When I shift from the first finger to the fourth, I, I make sure to bring my fourth, my pinky, which is not very long, unfortunately, close to my first finger so that the shift is smooth. And again, it's a lifting of the weight of the right hand. And there's a sort of a whistling sound in between the B and the G. Of course, when it's in tempo, you don't hear that whistle so much. Um, but for sure, don't play or something of that sort. To find your high C in bar 12, you can use your first finger as a silent guiding finger sitting on the harmonic A. If you put your thumb under the neck, we are naturally in position for the, for the A. It's like easy to find. And then the C is right there. A and C. Um, so let me play from bar 10. So, I honestly, I don't use the A, I just kind of find my way there um, with the thumb still hanging on to the neck. Um, but this will be one more option. Uh, also be sure that your C has a different color um, than the D in bar 10. So it should be different than maybe less. Right. Just before the recap, um, it, which is in bar 18, we have um, here we have a clear uh, example of how a handwritten manuscript can uh, differ from the printed edition, even if it's urtext. The manuscript is available online and I will add a link. In the printed edition in bar 17, we have a long diminuendo starting on the F and gradually going down to the F sharp. So, so it's a long diminuendo. If we look at the manuscript, this diminuendo is not gradual. There is a bump just where the F sharp begins. So you can interpret it uh, as uh, So you can even go to the F sharp and only then start your diminuendo. Uh, there's sort of the little details that um, make everybody express this beautiful piece differently. Um, don't forget to relax your vibrato on the F sharp. Two, three, two. So, 
start quite uh, wide. And as you gradually diminuendo, also the left hand diminuendos. Um, in bar 21, don't be afraid to use two slurs. Um, no one can play this in one slur. Just be sure that the bow change is smooth and comes from your shoulder. So this is a... Long B, I use two bows. When I, what I mean by uh, changing the bow from the shoulder, if you think of the whole arm as one unit, and usually we don't do that. Usually we try to be flexible and not be stiff. Uh, but here, think of the arm as a one unit, and then change the bow from from your shoulder. The final note, the G, should have a narrow and fairly fast vibrato, all in pianissimo. This is an example of a quiet moment that still requires a bit of tension to keep our sound shimmering and vibrant. Uh, so as you see, the amplitude is quite small. Um, the vibrato is not slow, and yet this is not a very dramatic place. It's, it's not this. It's a, it's a relaxed vibrato. That's it for today. Thank you, and see you next time.